That's it being said, in my time running out, I will yield back and now recognize the ranking member from New York, Mr. Tonko. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, again, welcome, Mr. Zeldin. Um, you previously committed to following the law and stated your belief that science should be left to the scientists. So I would like to focus on just how well you've been fulfilling those commitments. To start, you initiated an effort to reconsider the 2009 um, endangerment finding that greenhouse gas emissions threaten the public health and welfare of current and future generations. Now, I have no doubt we may disagree about just how to appropriately um, regulate sources of climate pollution. But I'm frankly shocked that there is a question of whether or not climate pollution harms the Americans' health and welfare. The endangerment finding is based on science, and scientists both within and without the federal government have continually reaffirmed that climate pollution does in fact harm our health and our welfare. So can you cite any peer-reviewed research that calls into question the science used to make the initial 2009 endangerment finding? Well, first off, um, Ranking Member uh, Tonko, uh, it's important to note to follow the law, to follow our obligations under the law. I'm not allowed to prejudge outcomes. We're going to go through a rulemaking process. We'll follow the Administrative Procedures Act. There will be a public comment period. Um, to, to your point more specifically, it's important to note that when the 2009 endangerment finding was done, uh, they didn't review carbon dioxide alone. It's carbon dioxide when mixed with five other well-mixed gases, which was called the greenhouse gases. Even though they were supposed to do it specifically on mobile sources, some of those greenhouse gases, some of those other well-mixed gases aren't even emitted uh, from motor vehicles, but they didn't study each of these six individually. They studied all six collectively. Uh, they had multiple other mental leaps that were done. They didn't say that carbon dioxide endangers public health. They say that carbon dioxide, when mixed with five other well-mixed gases, contribute to climate change. How much, you might ask, they don't say. But the number's north and zero. They said contribute, not causes. And then they say climate change endangers public health. So uh, it's, it's just important to follow the multiple mental leaps, but as far as peer-reviewed studies, it's important when that, to note when that 2009 endangerment finding uh, was reached, they didn't study any of these six gases individually. Claiming my time, I, I hear the prejudge statement, but I don't think major regulatory processes are launched on a whim. So can you not point to any scientific evidence to warrant a reconsideration in the first place? Well, uh, in addition to what I just stated, they also didn't factor in uh, any of the, obviously, the scientific developments since over the last 16 years. There has not been any public comment period over the course of the last 16 years. They haven't factored in innovation. Uh, emissions have been down over the course of the last 20 years. Um, but getting back to the heart of your initial question, that not even when they did the 2009 endangerment finding, did they ever conduct uh, reviews of each uh, emission individually? Well, in addition to the elimination of atmospheric research, I'm very concerned by the public reporting around the future of the Office of Research and Development. ORD conducts independent research, and this independence is critical to both informing regulatory decision making and ensuring high levels of scientific integrity at the agency. The Office of Inspector General identified, and I quote, promoting ethical conduct and protecting scientific integrity, close quote, as a top management challenge in fiscal year 2024. How do you plan to address this challenge if ORD is significantly reorganized or, in fact, eliminated? Well, for one, we will fulfill all statutory obligations. Two, it's important to note that inside of program offices, science and research is done. Additionally, as part of the reorg uh, that was announced a couple weeks back, uh, science and research are being elevated inside of all different program offices. Uh, there's a new uh, office inside of the Office of Air and Radiation focusing on state air partnerships, advancing cooperative federalism and working on state implementation plans. There's a new Office of Applied Sciences and Environmental Solutions. Uh, the scientific work that we do in fulfilling our statutory obligations is important. Okay, let me reclaim my time here. Has EPA evaluated how closing or significantly reducing ORD would affect its ability to fulfill statutory obligations while ensuring scientific integrity across the agency? Absolutely. And will you share that evaluation with members of the subcommittee? Sure, we could talk about it here today. Okay. Um, 
Well, my time has expired, so I will yield back, but um, thank you for your response.